Today, my group and I will be presenting our group project for subject FIN 420, which will be a financial position and performance report comparison between Panasonic and Panasonic. The main reason for us to choose this both company are because we want the both companies come from the same field, and which in our case, both companies are electrical appliances brand. Um, before we we get started, let me briefly introduce both companies to everyone watching this presentation. Panasonic is a local brand. It was founded in Penang in 1965. Uh, the brand Panasonic was registered in 1982. The Panasonic means uh, Penang Light. Right, uh, so today Panasonic brands are not only sold in Asian country but also in the Middle East. And Panasonic was formed in 1918, formerly known as National, but in 1970 it was changed to Panasonic due to commercialism. Today Panasonic is a globally known brand for electrical appliances. So when it comes to Liquidity, we can see the current ratio for Panasonic and Panasonic, there's a huge difference. Uh, during these three years, uh, the comparison was done for three years in 2016, 2017 and also 2018. You can see that Panasonic has a lot of advantage over Panasonic in terms of uh, current ratio whereby the current ratio help investor and creditors understand the liquidity of a company and how easily the, that company will be able to pay off its current liabilities. A higher current ratio which is owned by Panasonic is always more favorable than a lower current ratio because it shows the company can more easily make current debt payment. If a company has to sell or fix asset to pay for its current liabilities, this usually means the company isn't making enough from operation to support activities. Three. Assalamualaikum, I'm Colin Masli, Renji Arifin from class NB02. I want to present that financial performance from 2016 until 2018 on the Panasonic and Panasonic on the ratio liquidity. From the graph shown that the Panasonic reached the more higher compared to Panasonic, which indicate that more big asset than current liability. It also uh, it also tell, tell us that uh, the company could pay out with the current liability without selling any long term asset. From here also we, we know that it's good uh, sign for the investor and more better, much better for the creditor. So for the next. Uh, Leverage, I will pass to my partner. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ahmad Izanihan. I will explain about leverage on debt ratio between Panasonic versus Panasonic. The debt ratio is should be carried in shown in a decimal format because it calculates total liabilities as a percentage of total asset. As uh, with many solvency ratio, a lower a lower ratio is more favorable than a higher ratio. From the table, we can see that the Panasonic are lower ratio compared to Panasonic, which means that the company has liabilities to pay off its liability with its asset. The debt ratio is a fundamental solvency ratio because creators are always concerned about being repaid when company borrow more money. Their ratio increase, uh, increase creditor will no longer loan them money. Com com sorry, company will, with higher debt ratio are better of looking to equity financing to grow the operation. Uh, next, I will, I will tell about uh, time interest and ratio. As the, the time interest ratio is stated in a number as opposed to opposed to a percentage. The ratio indicates how many times a company could pay the interest with its before tax income. So obviously, the larger ratio are considered more favorable than a similar ratio. In other words, mean that a company Panasonic make enough income to pay its total interest expenses 8.4 times 
or go compare to 10 subjects one time, which we can see on the uh, the uh, That's all my part. I will continue with my friends. Thank you. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Zaid. I will explain the average correlation period for Panasonic versus Panasonic. As you all can see, the graph stated for three years from 2016 to 2018 for both Panasonic and Panasonic. For 2016, the graph show for Panasonic is 0 0.71 and Panasonic is 0.1 on 2017 for Panasonic is 1.29 and Panasonic is 0.1 for 2018 quick height for Panasonic which is 4.06 and Panasonic is 0.13 the day of collection period at Panasonic show that are shorter compared to Panasonic which indicate Panasonic don't have a problem in collecting that and look more consistent unfortunately Panasonic show the higher day to collect that and for next slide is asset turnover ratio as you can see, on 2016 for Panasonic is 1.447 and Panasonic is 1.102. On 2017, the graph show for Panasonic is 1.347 and Panasonic is 1.116. On 2018, for Panasonic is 1.183 and Panasonic is 1.119 The ratio measure how efficiently a firm use its assets to generate sales So Panasonic is the higher ratio compared to Panasonic Higher turnover ratios mean the company is using its assets more efficiently Lower ratio means that the company is not using its asset efficiently and most likely have management or production problems. That's all for average correlation period and asset turnover ratio. I will pass to my team members for next slide. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nura Fadila Binti Ruzwan. I will continuing presenting the next slide. Okay, so for my part, I will presenting profitability and for this uh, profitability, we have two which is operating margin, oh, sorry, operating profit margin and also um, return on asset ratio which is, uh, the short form is ROA. Okay, for this slide, I will presenting operating profit margins. So why we should uh, calculate operating profit margin is because we want to know or uh, we want to measure how much profits are produced at a certain sales levels, uh, level of sales. Okay, this uh, ratio is indirectly measure how well a company manage its expense relative to its uh, net sales. Okay, uh, they can do this by either get by either generating more revenues while keeping expenses constant or keep revenues and lower expenses. Uh, this ratio, as you can see at the graph, we can uh, infer that Panasonic is higher rather than Panasonic for three continuous years after we calculate from year 2016 until 2018. For Panasonic, uh, the highest ratio uh, of operating profit margin is in 2016, which uh, they get 70% uh, higher than uh, Panasonic. So, we can uh, say that um, the sales that Panasonic do is uh, made up of net income. 
Okay, for the next slide, I will explain on return on asset ratio, which we call ROA. So, why we should uh, calculate this ratio is because um, we want to measure how effectively a company can earn on return on its investment in assets. Uh, in other words, uh, ROA shows how efficiently a company can convert the money used to purchase assets into net income or net profits. Okay, so it only makes sense that a higher ratio is more favorable to investor because it shows that the company is more effectively uh, managing its asset to produce greater amounts of net income. So a positive ROA ratio usually indicates an upward profit trend as well. ROA is most useful for comparing companies in the same industry as different industry use a set differently. So in this graph, we can infer that Panasonic higher which indicate better income to shareholders. So uh, it may be that uh, by this graph, Shows, by this ratio uh, shows that uh, most of the shareholder will uh, invest more on Panasonic rather than Panasonic. We can see in three years continuously uh, in the graph uh, for 2016, Panasonic has increased about 14.90% uh, and Panasonic only have 4.21%. So this uh, ratio, we calculate that uh, the highest year that um, Panasonic made uh, ROA is in 2016 and the graph is uh, down for 2017 and 2018. So it may be because it has some problem um, due to economic crisis. As a conclusion that uh, I can infer from the slide once until uh, the ending after what uh, my friends has been presenting to you is Panasonic is um, Panasonic is better than Panasonic uh, through all the ratios and Panasonic perform more than Panasonic and also uh, we can infer that Panasonic is established. We can infer that Panasonic is better than Panasonic. Thank you.